Take 265. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another replay review. We're here on Regret. This is a gold level gameplay, Team Slayer with Optic Sport Boy. And we're going to look at the initial spawn here and then do some housekeeping stuff. So, oh, let's find him. There we go. Uh, gets the tangerine, goes bottom mid for the OS, jumps in uncontested, grabs OS, takes a tangerine to the face, and dies to Dougie and Kush. Now, look at the timer. It's going to be about 11.55 for the OS pickup. That means the next one's going to be 9.55. Overall, not a ton you can do. It was a really well-thrown nade. You burned the OS. It went to your team. It didn't go to the red team's benefit. So that's an advantage to you. I love the optic skins. They look really cool. Somebody already took the carbine. We've talked about regret in the last replay review. And for whoever's asking in the comments, yo, why'd you do the same map twice, dude? It's because I go in the order of the replays that I receive. Uh, through my email. That's the fairest way that I can do this. And there's not an overwhelming amount of maps in Halo 5. And the principles carry over from map to map. Um, caster, OS, Storm Rifles, and the Tangerines that spawn bottom middle. Or not bottom middle, but basically the bottom openings of each of the bases. Those, to me, seem to be the high prioritization stuff. And for map control reasons, after this gunfight, I'll, I'll talk about top center. But top center is the place to control on this map. So, ooh, really um, a good conceptual nade, but overthrown. I bet that's going to pop out the right side. Yeah, it popped out the right side. Now, the second one hits really nicely. You get the cleanup. Bravo. Picks up Storm Rifle. Nice. I would definitely tell you keep that Magnum out when you're roaming. The Magnum is the utility gun. That means it's good at almost every engagement distance except ultra close and ultra long. It can be very effective in the mid range. So the Storm Rifle, you limit your opportunities here because if you pop out and you see somebody a caster, Storm Rifle's going to suck at that distance. So we're going to walk out here. Okay, that was weird. Did you not see the red player? Doesn't look like he saw you either. So now you scroll back over. Miss the first shot, miss the second shot. Throw a wasted nade. And... A little bit slow reaction times, but end up taking the player out. That player definitely had toggle the to crouch on. <laughs> uh, gets the lucky escape. That was close. Oh, wow. Ends up taking him out. Nice. Okay. Good conversion there. All right. Also, by the way, guys, hope you enjoy the 60 FPS. Fast forward is working again. Thanks for your patience. I wasn't able to do... Oh, nice little jump. That's a cool little jump, dude. Are you going for the sneaky Salea drop down assassination kills? If anybody has seen the Live in Your Life Saleya montage, let me know in the comments. That's like the that is the greatest Halo montage to me. I love that thing. Okay. Panicky. Super panicky. Let's talk about that. So when we miss our first few shots, right? The crosshair is going wildly everywhere. Panic melee when he's way too far away to melee. You can see that. Doesn't connect. And then a panic grenade. It doesn't connect. It just wasn't well thrown. It wasn't the right timing. If you open up a shot string like that where you are getting, like, really panicked, just calm down. Don't grip the controller with the death grip, okay? Just keep your hands nice and relaxed and recenter yourself. Focus on getting that crosshair back on the opponent and drilling him with shots because you always want to be focused on that. If the melee had opened itself as an opportunity, go for it. But it didn't. It was just a oh, wildly like swinging the crosshair because you panicked. And it happens to all of us, but just pay attention to that. I've seen in this gameplay, in my pre-screening, uh, definitely lack of comfort with the precision weaponry. Something that's very common down in gold. Okay. Now we're going to be paying attention at 9.55 for that OS. Couple wasted shots. And then back right into the AR, the more comfortable gun for you, even though the Magnum would represent a better option. Ooh, ooh, that was close. Lucky your teammate took him out because you saw him on the radar poking out to the right side. Every three seconds, your eye should be darting down bottom left. Darting down bottom left, okay? Also, right now, we're close to 955. We want to be getting ready for either a caster pickup or the OS pickup. Since you've already got teammates positioned up at caster, it's up to you to go and pick up that OS or at least confirm it. Nice little conversion there. You're lucky the guy didn't back smack you, though, at higher levels. That won't fly. So 955. None of the team is in position down uh, bottom middle. Except one red player who is timing the OS, right? So this red player is going to get a nice, free, uncontested OS. Two, two side effects of this. First of all, they get the advantage of the OS, which is a bummer for you guys. But by having nobody down here to even sight 
and and put shots into this player, you can't have the knowledge in your head of when the OS was picked up, which makes the next timing uncertain. So it's even if you're going to go down here and die, you get the information of, okay, it was picked up 950. I know the next one's going to be showing up at 750, and that's a really important part of this map, okay? Little waste of tangerine. I'm not sure why it was thrown. You hear your teammate in a gunfight down here. Gonna poke around. BR should be out. Oh, but it's so rough. Isn't that the worst feeling in the world when you come around the corner and it's the OS player? Not a whole lot you can do there. We've all had that situation in games, right? Come around the corner. It's the full shield of OS guy, and you're like, why me? Why me, architects? Picks up the storm rifle each time. Little shoulder charge slide out. Ah, there's such a reliance on the automatic weaponry, man. I want to see more of the Magnum play. As the utility weapon, the better you get with that Magnum, the better you're going to get at Halo 5, dude. And uh, forewarning to anybody who's watching, I'm not playing a whole lot of Halo 5 right now. I'm playing some... Ooh, nice. That would be a sweet nade. One kill. I'll be Did the other guy not even look over? Nice double kill. I'm playing ma bleh bleh, mainly MCC right now. So just understand all the, the critique I'm giving is just from the experience of playing Halo for over 10 years and doing this replay review series since Halo Reach. But I am no and in no way... Oh, weird. You're going for like a slide back assassination? You got to jump if you're going to go for the, the assassination, man. The, the sweet ninja requires you to go up and over them. So in this time right now, I'm not planning a whole lot of Halo 5. I'm mainly doing MCC. And know that everything that I'm talking about is just general halo basics okay i'm not going to be able to give you the same kind of expertise that like a luke the notable would or a proximity both guys you should be subscribed to ends up getting the nice little kill there right right jumps up gonna pick up the br maybe a couple wasted nades look at the radar look at the radar <gasps> no what are you doing no it's a cool jump but why go there you saw this dude on the radar and now you have opened yourself up to this Okay, so let's focus on that moment. And in fact, I think the kill right after this, once I jump back on board with you, uh, will be a good point to talk about movement. Because all of us, regardless of what level of play, I think have agendas in our mind about where we want to go on the map. And sometimes we're kind of stubborn and we don't react to what's going on around us. We just drive where we want to drive regardless. Gets the hit marker on the first one, second one, not necessary drills the guy doing a real nice job there no 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 no. go finish him right now swap to the br and go finish this guy because you have gotten him very weak he probably only has a little sliver of shield left yes he has the caster so if he's real sharp he could take you out but you have given yourself the advantage you've given yourself the kill you've done 98 percent of the work to stay up here and let his shield respawn makes no sense yeah definitely a positioning error when you're playing we want to control top mid your objective should be control top mid. As you're moving around the map, oh, let's look at this. One, two, okay, not a bad conversion. Might have been able to get three had you not charged in for the melee there or maybe thrown a nade right in the pocket. I'm not sure if you had a nade left anymore. You didn't, I don't think you did. But on our way to top mid and on our way focused around map control and power weapon pickups and timings, we gather things like the carbine. We gather things like tangerines or storm rifles, okay? but understand that you have to react to the other players around you. And when you jump onto a spot just because your brain says, I gotta go there right now, you opened yourself up to the player with the needler who shot you in the back. Also, we did miss the 750 timing, so we're gonna take a look at the OS at 550. The more OS and casters you can pick up, the better. Uh, really weird decision choice to just jump out there. And then again, look at this. If that guy had a little bit more awareness, you would be dead. So if this was a plat game or a diamond game, definitely be a bit dead. This is not a, a get my shields back kind of position. So, and the AR has been your primary killing tool. This is a situation where AR would be nice. I'm not sure. I really, I'm not sure what you're going for in a lot of these situations why you try to jump over him and up onto that thing. Now, that's a pretty decent little escape. Nope, not on that side. You can't do a jump up on that side. That was a decent little escape right there. Okay. First tangerine. Oh, very close, though. It's it's interesting. In that situation, I think you would have had the cleanup with the AR out. But other times in the game, I would just rather see Magnum stuff going down. Precision weaponry. Okay, so the caster is up. 
You see the caster's up. Uh, goes for the pickup on the storm rifle there. I'm not sure if you were hoping that uh, Sprint would come out. In those situations, probably just start pepper peppering them with your gun. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Who got the caster? You hear your teammate taking a fight? I applaud you to come help out. Great nade. Okay, cool. Little friendly fire on his backside, but it looks like he was probably going to die anyway. I love that optic camo, dude. Looks so stinking good. Magging him out. Oh, and the OS guy again. It's like deja vu, except you burned it. That's great. So if you're going to die to the OS, at least do your best to get him to lose as much of it as possible. So you did get rid of it. That's, oh, oh, and he gets killed right there with really sick plasma nade. So we missed the 550 OS. The only OS that the blue team got this whole game was the very first 1150 OS. You guys missed the 9, the 7, and the 5. I think you may have controlled Caster as a team once. We hear fights going down. Look at the guy on the radar. Probably back down. That 2v1 is not going to do any good. That's a good back down. But, 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 but. What if they're watching? Look at that line of sight directly to you while you're one shot. Again, not a place to recover your shields. Super not a place to recover your shields. Now you have to deal with the two on one and escaping again. Very lucky. Push in, push in, you hear, you see the, no, no, don't shoot your teammate. <laughs> That's not what you want to do. <laughs> you could have, uh, what is the word? Pincered, you could have pincer attacked them, dude. Look to your right. To your right. Magnum out, brah. Magnum out. AR is not going to work at this distance. Nope. Man, it's almost exclusive. I don't even know if you get a kill with the Magnum this game. There might be one or two. Turn around, turn around, turn around, round, round. You heard him in your headphones, or maybe you didn't. So my headphone volume is really low right now, but I'm hearing a lot of the explosions and gunfights going on around you. So even if you have to use cheap little earbuds, okay, it's worth using headphones because it gives you that spatial awareness. It gives you that. I now switch to the Magnum for this easy cleanup. Okay, at least your teammate picked it up there. Um, <clears throat> swap, 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 swap. Oh, this, the cleanups with the Magnum would have been super easy. But uh, do put on some headphones. I, I'll talk about that in the bullet points real quick. Okay, 13 and 10, not a terrible game, and you guys end up winning. But yeah, there was a lot more potential for you to do better. So thank you for the replay, Optic Sport Boy. I appreciate it. A couple of things to clean up. You probably sound like a broken record here. OS timings, caster timings, control top center. I could talk to you about working more with your teammates, but really I think it just boils down to right now, controlling top center. Beyond that, more precision kills, good sir. So I bump the X button and bump the camera. Let me fix that. Okay, make it look nice, Dragoon. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Train with the Magnum. Force yourself to use the Magnum. AR is a phenomenal tool, and you will see plenty of pro players using it but they use it in specific situations. When they are running around, when they're roaming, when they're doing the majority of their kills outside of close distance, it's always on that magnum. Utility weapon means it's good in a wide variety of situations. It's like the BR of this game. And the more time and effort you put into it, you will get leaps and bounds of performance and uh, better score gains out of it. And headphones. There were plenty of times where I could hear stuff going on around you, like a guy getting shot or a guy shooting at you, and the reaction time to it was rather delayed. If you're on TV speakers, it's way harder to discern what's coming from the left and the right. You don't have to have some crazy Astros or super nice headphones. I used earbuds for a long time, but just being able to hear the stereo difference of somebody on the left and the right makes a giant difference in these games. And Spartans are so loud in Halo 5, dude. It's why Halo 5 doesn't really have a 1v1 scene. The footstep noises are insanely loud. And I, I should stress, uh, a more popular 1v1 scene. I, I remember Ninja going off on a pretty big rant about why he doesn't play Halo 5 1v1s. And a lot of it comes down to how loud Guardian's footsteps and movement are. And you can capitalize on that big time if you're rocking some headphones. So overall, not terrible, not uh, something you should lose sleep over. I think continue to practice, continue to play, and Platinum and Beyond is right down the road. So thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the 60 FPS, please let me know down in the comment section below. I think that's all the housekeeping stuff. Shoutouts to 343 for fixing the fast forward bug. It is nice to be able to fast forward once again 
If you guys are enjoying Anvil's Legacy, let me know. Thanks, have a good day, and I'll see you next time.